Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order. And the uh, first item of business on our agenda is the minutes. Uh, motion, motion to approve the minutes. Hey, hey, Sarah? Yes? Before you do that, can you just tell me who, who all is there? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I meant to do roll call. So, Bruce, who is present is myself, Sarah Roy, Mike Allen, Karen Seacrest, um, Steve uh, Nyadek. Nyadek. Uh, and on the phone is Richard Saldano, Scott Craighead, and uh, oh, Bill Hurley just walked in. And, Hello. Bruce, I don't know if you caught it, but Nate's going supposed to go, be joining us at about 6.15. Yep, I did catch that. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to go forward with uh, the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from November? Um, motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes from Mike Allen. Uh, do I have a second? A uh, second um, by Karen Seacrest. So motion to approve the minutes from November. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. I will abstain. You will abstain. I'm sorry. Uh, so we have um, one abstention from Steve. And one, two, three, four, five, six approve. All right. Next item of business is new member introductions. And um, before we get started with that, uh, Mike, you did sign this, didn't you? Um, Bill, I don't know if you'd be interested in signing. We have, uh, and if anybody wants me to add their name, just uh, in a moment, give me a shout out. We have a uh, congratulations on your new baby card for Santina oh. that I'm going to send to her. If anybody would like to send, would you mind passing that sure. down to Bill? Um, and I can get, my neighbor is uh, friends with her, so I can get her home address from her. Um, all right, a shout out from members on the phone. Who would like me to add their name to the card? Sure. Bruce is fine. Yep. Okay. Scott, fine. Thank you. Nice all gesture. Right. All right. Great. So. I'm excited to introduce uh, Steve Nyadek. He's our newest member. He was just sworn in last week, right, Steve? Last Friday. Last Friday. Um, welcome. welcome to the Thank committee. We do a brief icebreaker. Um, Bill, feel free to participate as you are an honorary member of the committee. I uh, just want to say your name, and um, and then we'll we'll do the people in the room first, and then we will do those on the phone. Thank you. Uh, just say your name, where you live in town, um, and your first concert you ever went to in your life. <laughs> see? Can't remember. Nope. I will start. Uh, my name is Sarah Roy. I live on Buena Vista Road um, up in the Stratfield neighborhood. And my first concert was Tiffany with New Kids on the Block opening in 1986 at the Providence Civic Center. Nice. Do you want us to wait on nope, your No, Nope, it's okay. okay. I'll All just right. say one of them because yeah. I don't know if it was my first. <laughs> Um, Karen Seacrest. I live over in Stratfield area as well. And um, I would say it would have to be police. Now, it was either at Hartford or SPAC, nice. but I can't remember which. <laughs> Mike? Uh, Mike Allen. I live on uh, Northfield Road, two blocks of the Post Road off of South Pine Creek. My first concert was Oreo Speedwagon, 1978 Kemper Arena, Kansas City. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> Bill? <laughs> Bill Hurley. I could say I live at 725 Old Post. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you kind of do. I, I live in uh, Newtown. Uh, my first concert, <laughs> well, it's a toss-up because they were pretty close to one another. But Hall and Oates, and I did see the police as yeah. well. <laughs> nice. We were probably oh, there together. <laughs> yeah, I wanted Hall to go to that right, one. Yeah. All right, Steve? Well, you guys don't even remember who these people are, probably. <laughs> uh, I live on Fairfield Beach Road. I've lived in Fairfield almost 30 years now. Um, I work for the town of Reading as a finance director, but I'm retiring in July. So uh, I'll be able to devote uh, some time to extra time to this committee, awesome. uh, overtime hopefully. Looking forward to it. In my first concert, it was, I'll give you either or. Um, I'm embarrassed to say it. Herman's Hermits and Jerry and the Pacemakers at Kennedy oh. State. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Or it was the Young Rascals down at Seaside Park when they had the tent there during the Barnum Festival. They were probably about the same year, which would have been 68-ish, I guess. Awesome. All right. Um, Scott, let's hear from you. Sure. So Scott Craighead has been in town for 
five years and live here at uh, Surrey Lane, which is kind of the Galloping Hill area between uh, Congress and Brookside and Black Rock and Burr, so kind of northern, northern Fairfield. Uh, it's kind of funny you asked that question about the first concert because it kind of dates all of us, right? <laughs> uh, I think I've got almost everybody beat but the, but the new gentleman who's there. Deep Purple. <laughs> Deep Purple. Uh-huh. Uh, Madison Square Garden in 19... It was 1972. How about that? Wow. All 1972, right. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Choking on the dope smoke already. <laughs> Uh, Richard, could you introduce yourself and tell us your first concert? Hey, yeah, this is Richard Soldano. I live on Sterling Street. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed to say, but my first concert was Backstreet Boys, not by choice. <laughs> my sisters and my mom and dad dragged me <laughs> to be home by myself. No shame in that game. Thank you. Uh, and Bruce, what was your uh, introduction? Uh, so- so Bruce Frangley, I I have we we have an apartment in 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 Fairfield uh, near um, Ward High School, uh, but primarily live now uh, in West Yarmouth in Massachusetts. Uh, and my first concert, uh, this is I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Karen. Had I known this, I uh, would have thought about the actual date, but is it was at some point in the 70s uh, in Tucson, Arizona, where I grew up. Uh, I saw Steve Miller. Awesome. Nice. All right. Thank you all for doing that. Um, we will move on to our next item of business, which is Town of Fairfield updates. I do not see Evan here, so we're going to... I have Mary's, just saying. So oh, Karen has Mary's. Great. We're going to table uh, the police department update. Um, I did hear from Emma. She was uh, last minute. She's not able to attend, and she did not have any updates she wanted me to convey on her behalf, so we're going to table that. Um, Bill, I don't know if you saw my email, but I was hoping you could just focus on primarily uh, yeah. with your update, the sidewalk consulting. Uh, yeah, don't, I don't really have a true update okay. on that outside of the fact that the roads are almost complete. They're still working on the sidewalk assessment. I did talk to the DPW director and see, mm-hmm. would he mind if we had a meeting and all that? Mm-hmm. And he was like saying, well, basically, let's wait and see what the results are, and then he would figure out what to do next after that. Uh, so just wanted to give you a heads up on that. I know we have a lot of stuff um, further in the meeting, uh, mm-hmm. but just to let you know, I did uh, attend the Grassmere Post Road public meeting and the Post Road Circle public meeting. Um, uh, met. Uh, they both went very well, very well attended, uh, I thought as well. I think it was almost 30 for the Grassmere Post and almost 50 for the Post Road Circle. Mm. Um, so there is something to be said, at least for online meetings that uh, tend to bring people out a little bit more that they can stay at home rather mm. than have to attend uh, somewhere. And then uh, just a couple of updates. Uh, the, um, the state admitted that they were kind of lagging behind on our Black Rock Turnpike lot zip application. But they acknowledged it, and they're reviewing it now uh, for anybody on on that one. And um, I know uh, the Pequot Avenue with signs and pavement markings, that went to the police commission, and that was approved. So uh, um, we just have to finalize that. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where the... The approval comes in December, and pretty much the line painting season's over. Yeah. So I'll probably have to uh, wait on that. The other thing, which I don't know if you saw my email, is I'm trying to organize that road safety audit. Uh, yes, I with replied. The state, mm-hmm. and um, uh, if we can get a couple people from the state and UConn, it also goes a long way. Would you tell the folks, um, for the record, what what area we're talking about? Okay, the road safety audit would be basically. Uh, from uh, it's on Stratfield Road, kind of in the Uncle School area, from I say Montauk Street uh, down uh, south uh, uh, towards Ville Avenue, the Bridgeport line. Um, I do know that the state is working on design again. It's probably a couple of years away of Collingwood intersection. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that will be upgraded. Uh, I'll have to check and see if the state or the city of Bridgeport owns the Villa Avenue signal. Uh, for that one, and then um, we can uh, the road safety audit is basically we get we try to get anybody. I, I invited the board of ed, bike and ped committee, maybe a couple of interested uh, residents 
um, uh, I did not invite the health department, so that reminds me to invite the health department, uh, engineering, maybe one DPW person, and obviously the police department. And we kind of walk as if we were going to be pedestrians and kind of write down all the pros and cons about uh, either the uh, conditions or um, crossings or how to uh, make it better uh, for pedestrians and maybe even sometimes motorists, you know, but it's mainly the focus is uh, for the pedestrian. And then from that, maybe that will stem to a possible grant or at least if it's something relatively small, if it's 100000 or $50,000 not really worth unless it's a really small type of grant um, to uh, just have the public works kind of chip away and maybe do it multi-phased over a couple of years or whatever. Uh, but if uh, there's grant money, whether sometimes it's a small amount or if it's a big one where like the Grassmere Post started from a uh, road safety audit, mm -hmm. uh, it certainly helps because they're competitive grants and when, when they see, oh my gosh, you know, 50 people or 30 people attended a meeting. We've got neighborhood support. We've got, you know, uh, RTM members. we got uh, bike and pedestrian. we got community leaders. And then you throw in either a school or economic development. It really starts to pile on the support. And, and again, if there's one place that really needs it, they're going to win or whatever. But if it's close to a tie, I think that does make a difference. So mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely helpful. Okay. That's the update from engineering. If I forgot something, by all means, you can remind me or email me. Oh great! Well, I I did have a, a follow up question with the um, some questions with the sidewalk updates. I know you said the streets are almost complete, mm -hmm. and then you'll be talking to DPW. Now, this is still um, existing sidewalks and making repairs and making them ADA compliant. Where uh, yeah, there, there's multi phases on that. Okay. One is the condition of the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and then they were supposed to do an assessment of just telling us where the ADA ramps are. I was under the impression that they were going to do con condition. Now I have to go back mm -hmm. through, through our scope if that was the case or not. Originally it was, but like everything else, you know, and somehow yeah. it got chopped. Some parts mm -hmm. got chopped off, so now i got to check on that. So uh, if it is, then that would maybe be a phase two or something later okay. on. Okay. So. The reason I ask, and I don't know if you saw my, my email about this, but for the, for the committee and for um, the record. Yeah? Oh. Um, uh, this... My question spurred from, you know, we've been working on the Mill Plain Road northbound ramp uh, crosswalk, and Bill was kind enough to work with the state to do a study, and they agreed it does warrant a crosswalk there. Um, however, they said they don't advise putting in a crosswalk um, okay, uh, until uh, because at this time because the uh, sidewalk ramps that come into that space right now are not ADA compliant. And so I'm, I asked Bill, you know, like, how do we get to that, like, okay, if we have to do the ADA-compliant sidewalk ramps first, is that part of this um, sidewalk consultant um, project? Uh, to, to the answer would be uh, no. No? I, isolated, we'd probably have to do the design. We'd have to send our okay. survey crew out. Okay. And, um, yeah, because the uh, consultant, that's not really designed right yeah. now. That was just for the assessment. Mm -hmm. If for some reason uh, they were doing it for twofold, one to prove to the board of finance mm -hmm. that you know their requests are valid or that we might even need more money. Mm -hmm. uh, the other would be, uh, and again, a lot of people might not realize that, but we almost have 130 miles worth of sidewalks. Yeah. And and then you know, oh, you got a you know okay. half a million dollars, or you know that's that's crazy. And then, then we mm -hmm. have to show why. And then try to prioritize, because every now and then we get accused of, oh, you did that road because somebody from the town lives there, and then they're not, you know, realizing that, no, it's based on either town use, we have a mini little matrix, or um, we uh, we go by, like I said, assessment or something like that. So, so perhaps um, after the new year we can talk about a plan for, for making the, the sidewalk ramps happen for Mill Plain Road. I know um, the sister of... The woman who was killed uh, there would, would very much like to see that that area made safer, you know, so that doesn't happen to anybody. Um, it, it, just so, like, you know, it would be the goal of us to try to do that some, do the design sometime in the winter or very early spring so that it can maybe be constructed during awesome. the spring. Okay. And even if, if we even started the construction, we would tell the state it's basically done and mm -hmm. they can right. do their markings and... I guess some signs, I don't know. Some signs will be responsible for, I'm sure. Right. But it also involved the other one by Carlton, too. Yes. So, yes. Um, so we would get to throw that in there. 
as well. Another crosswalk. That's a real long crosswalk. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. All right, I think that's it for. Does anybody have any questions for, for from the on the committee? Have any questions for Bill? I actually do. Steve, yeah. yeah. Sure, right in there. You mentioned uh, BlackRock Turnpike, and you call it a lot SIP. Did you mean low SIP money? Stuff? No, actually, lot SIP. It's, di oh, it's, it's different. different. Okay, yeah. all right. Low SIP is, is kind of where the, the town, I mean, the state gives the town a particular amount of money, say 300000 It's usually for a lot of paving or some sort of drainage projects, but they have to be specifically road projects. Okay. Lot SIP is very similar, but in the sense it's, it's the local transportation capital improvement projects. Okay. And so that has a tendency that could be bridges, that could be sidewalks, that could be um, traffic signals. It's a little bit more expanded. Some of the, the loads, you know, they do overlap a little bit, but for the most part, uh, the lot SIP are, I think, 500000 and over, and they're site-specific, while low SIP is kind of town-wide. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Sure. All right, um, we're going to move on to Forestry and Sustainable Task yes. Force. Karen uh, is going to speak on behalf of Mary. Yes, uh, Mary said, first of all, sorry, she didn't make it here, but she knew if she called in, she can't speak. So, oh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so she sent me all her information. Great. It's quite, it's quite a bit, so give me one minute. Okay. <laughs> um, number, number one, they did the ribbon cutting at Burroughs Park Garden, 355 Burroughs Road. That's literally wow. right as you turn on Burroughs across from the cemetery there. Um, they rejuvenated the Rockland Park traffic triangle considerably, um, uh, really thanks to the Board of Realtors and the Mill River Wetland Committee, as well as the Connecticut Audubon. So, Great. And that, I think, was in the paper, too. I know I saw some, some report on that. Um, number two, they'll be updating their sustainability plan and would love help with the biking walking section. Take a look if there are other sections you would like to help us include information on. Um, so if you go online um, with the Sustainability Committee, you can get that, or I can pass it around or have Mary forward. Yeah. Um, planning to produce a bi-monthly sustainability e-newsletter. So if you'd like us to include information in it, please feel free to send info, um, perhaps best to share with either myself or Mary, um, because I serve as a liaison on the Forestry Committee and the Sustainability, and Mary serves as a liaison on the Bike Ped, so that's why we sort of you know cross, cross a few paths that way. Um, they have confirmed that April 30th will be Earth Day with the Fairfield Y Healthy Kids Day um, once again, and they'd love to have the bike ped at the event. Um, we'll keep us posted as they get closer. We've okay. always had like a little table or signs or something okay. included. Um, they're also working on a list of 2021 accomplishments and 2022 goals to be presented soon. Um, so their sustainability task force actually has a very large following. So I think, you know, us getting information in there might be very, you know, worthwhile. It might be better than the weekly newsletter with Brenda, really, to be honest, mm -hmm. because hers gets so bogged down with so much information, but this mm -hmm. might be seen by more people. So Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. So Thanks, let me know Karen. if anyone has any information they want to share. Uh, any questions about uh, Forestry and Sustainable Task Force? No? All right. All right, we are going to move on to committee updates and new business. Uh, I'm going to, I think, I believe I forwarded everybody a draft meeting schedule. Every December we have to vote on um, both our calendar for the upcoming year and nominate and elect officers. Yep. Um, just for the record, uh, just going to briefly, this is, will always be, all of these are on Thursdays at 6 o'clock. And um, once we approve this, I will request this room uh, be reserved for all these meetings. Uh, and you'll notice they're all the third Thursday of the month except uh, February. I know in, ahead of time that um, we're trying to go away for school break <laughs> the week before. So I did speak to Jennifer Carpenter. She said it's fine to move that one um, to the 4th February. So it's uh, January 20th, February 24th, March 17th, April 21st, May 19th, June 16th, July 21st, August 18th, September 15th, October 20th, November 17th, and December 15th. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the 2022 meeting schedule? Karen has uh, made a motion to approve the 2022 meeting schedule. Do I have a second? Mike Allen has seconded. Uh, the motion is to approve the 2022 meeting schedule for the Fairfield Bike and Pedestrian Committee. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Motion passes. 
Great. Sounds unanimous. Sounds unanimous. Okay, now we move on to the nomination and election of officers. This is also something we're supposed to do every year. Um, we have three positions, chair, vice chair, and secretary. Um, so I am happy to nominate myself um, for chair. I don't know if somebody needs to nominate me. Is that how that works? Or? I'll nominate you. I'll nominate you. Want to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nominate. All right, Mike Allen has nominated Sarah Roy um, for chair. Do I, I guess now we need to make a motion. I just. I just listened to the Roberts rule. So I'm trying to be very. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, do I have a motion to nominate uh, me, Sarah Roy, as chair of this committee? Yes. Karen made the motion. So um, Karen. Do I have a second to um, nominate Sarah Roy as chair of the committee? Mike Allen seconds. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And now we go on to the vice chair. Uh, I did have um, an offline conversation with Karen, who uh, very graciously offered, um, if we will have her, to be the vice chair for her final year on the committee. Um, would someone uh, like to make a motion? Motion to nominate Karen Seacrest as vice chair. But that was Mike Allen. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second to that motion? I can second it. Uh, any question or discussion about vice chair? No? Okay. All in favor of having um, Karen B. Seacrest be vice chair of our committee for the following year, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And I should remind everybody, um, this is an important position because if for some reason I am not able to attend the meeting, Karen would facilitate the meeting on my behalf. Um, that's why I switched that. I knew in advance I wouldn't be able to make the third Thursday in February. Try to make your job as easy as possible, Karen. <laughs> Um, but thank you for being willing to be vice chair. Now, the final um, <laughs> final officer that we need to elect is the secretary. And um, as most of you know, Steve, you, I'm going to inform you, Bruce will be coming off of the committee in January when he officially changes his residence from Fairfield to West Yarmouth, Massachusetts. And so this is an important um, <clears throat> position for Freedom of Information Act reasons, uh, pu public information reasons, we have to have a record of the minutes each month of our meeting. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Bruce, would you mind speaking for a minute about um, what your experience has been in the last year taking the minutes? Yeah, I, um, it, it is, uh, it's, it's time consuming. There's no, no, no doubt about that, but, but it is not that difficult because if you follow Robert's rules of order, you're really only supposed to capture the topic discussed, not actually what was discussed. Uh, so that makes it you know, very simple. Uh, you don't want to add anything to the notes that aren't, aren't motion related or, or represent opinions because you want to make sure that those notes are, are not something that, that, you know, creates problems down the road. So, it, and, and you have access to the recording and the meeting. So it's, it's not like you have to be a very good note taker during the, the, the meeting. You physically have a recording to, to review. Um, and it, it usually takes me probably two or, or three hours a, a month. Uh, perhaps that's just because I'm slow. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and, and generally, they, there's not a lot of changes if you just stick to the Roberts rules and be very cut and dry and not, you know, try to get too, uh, too, too detailed in what you're saying. So Thank you. Yeah, they, that's what they said on the video I watched today. You know, it's, the minutes are about recording what was done, not what was, not what was said. And so they are very cut and dry, straightforward. Uh, we do need someone to, to come forward who's willing to do this. Um, like I said, January's meeting will be Bruce's last meeting. Uh, do we have anyone who is willing to come forward tonight? Yeah. And the only thing I'd add, too, as I mentioned to you, Sarah, it's a great way to really learn what's going on because you've got to pay somewhat <laughs> some, some attention. Yeah. never anyone's funnest task. No. 
it's not it's not a sexy job, but it's an important job. <laughs> um, And I should, I forgot to mention, uh, one of our other new members, Tom Keene, was not in a, able to attend tonight. He had a prior longstanding commitment. Um, so whether or not he would be willing to do this, I don't know. I haven't had the opportunity to have a conversation with him. Um, so I need everybody to uh, think about whether or not they'd be willing to come forward um, and be, be the secretary for a year. These appointments are only one year. We take... Uh, we held elections every December, so it, it, if you you know decide at the end of the year you don't want to do it, we um, we could look at having someone else do it. But we do need someone to do it for um, for well, the upcoming year. And the reality is, if someone doesn't step forward, um, each committee member has to do one a month. I mean, that that's just going to have, be the way it has to go. Yeah. <laughs> to be done. We have yeah. to have somebody do it. So. <laughs> yeah. Either someone does that's it every month, or that's the reality. Month, or, that's the reality. Yes. Yeah. That's by committee. Yep. And, yeah. Yep. Either someone has to do it each month or we all each have to take a turn and we'll just be assigned every month someone to do it. So since Bruce is, is next meeting, um, last meeting is in January, we, um, I move that we, we, we can table this conversation until January um, to see if someone's willing to come forward. I can have a conversation with Tom to see um, if it's something that he'd be interested in. Um, but... For now, I'm going to table the secretary vote. Bruce, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Great. In other organizations, if you didn't come to the meeting, you were right. volunteering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> For the next. <laughs> Just tease. I'm sorry. Did somebody want to say something on the phone? No? Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to make a comment that, um, you know, I've been in other committees and whatever. Yeah. The rotating um Thing works pretty well. Does it? Unless somebody volunteers. So if somebody yeah. volunteers, you pretty much don't have an option. And secondarily, um, I mentioned uh, to Sarah that any financial stuff, I'd be willing to take that part on. Oh, yes, we got, we got something for you. I, mentioned, I, I, I forgot to mention, um, thank you, Steve, for reminding me. I, I forgot to put that um, in my notes that uh, Steve, our newest, one of our newest members, has very generously offered to take over Laura's um, financial reporting responsibilities. And so now that he's official, an official member of the committee, I'm going to connect him with Laura so that she can, she can provide him with instructions, very basic, on what needs to be done with that. So thank you, Steve. Is she a member of the committee? I didn't see her she was. Come up. She was. She, she was. was. She, she, Since inception. Oh, she came. She, she just came, came off. Okay. Yeah. yeah, she served her two terms, and so she had to come yeah. up. Okay. Yep. Great. All right. We're going to move on. So we're going to table the secretary vote um, until January, and we're going to move on to uh, Scott. Would you and, and Bill here too? Would you all give us an, a brief update on the chair of the road sign research? Sure. Happy to. And uh, I want to thank Bill for taking the time. He and I met for you know an hour and change about a week and a half or so ago. Uh, great to spend some time with him in person, and uh, I, I learned an awful lot about the process. I know that Bill had updated the committee last month as well, but just for you know benefit of repetitiousness and also education for those who weren't uh, at the meeting last month, um, there is a process, and there's a book or a Bible we can call it called the MUTCD, the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, if I got that right, Bill. Um, it's pretty thick. It's pretty old, but that is where all signs uh, need to come from to go onto our streets. So that's kind of step one. There's like a five, six, seven step process I kind of put together on a piece of paper after talking to Bill. But that's kind of step one is we have to, you have to determine as a committee, you know, what signs or what signage we think has, has merit on our roads. And it would come from that book. We have to then agree as a committee as to what the sign or signage should be. And then we have to get, um, I guess, pick a location or locations as to where it might be. We can talk about that in another minute or so about how we might want to do that. Um, after that, you know, Bill, I know you suggested kind of best practices would be to get a petition um, for the residents, I guess, who are around the area that we would pick as where we think a sign or sign should go. So that's probably something to consider as well. And he shared with me uh, a packet, an example of, of what uh, somebody else has done here to get that process undertaken. And it was very impressive where I think there were two or three pages of 
of residents signing uh, acceptance to have signage in their in their backyard, so to speak. Um, after that, the police commission would need to be petitioned, and uh, I learned that that's a, a committee of, of volunteers as opposed to police uh, professionals. So that commission would need to be petitioned. Uh, certainly, Bill has has input uh, into that commission. I believe um, our our police officer on our committee, uh, Evan Caseman, also has the ability to provide input to that commission as well. And then eventually the police commission of, what, seven, eight, nine volunteers, I think, Bill, would vote on uh, the acceptance of that METCT signage uh, location. Um, and then from there, if it's approved, then basically it's kind of a fait accompli to pass or to inform the DPW as they were to put the signs. So um, did I capture that correct, uh, Bill, as best I could? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the, the way to go. Um, uh, we have uh, accepted a few, and again, I got, you got to kind of go around the, the gauntlet a little bit. Of I, I know when the sound cyclist gave us, it's the law, three feet, you know, keep three feet away. That is not an MUTDC CD sign. Um, but you still had we had to go through the process, and originally the police commission was a little hesitant. But the next time around, and we kind of we said that they would be temporary and they'd be more of an educational sign. That I, I don't think anybody would vote, sue the town because it was that. But um, I did talk to the Yukon safety people, and the it's with the apostrophe. He had said that. Uh, um, the METCD doesn't allow that, so we got to kind of be careful. But again, it's under the guise of uh, they're temporary, and at least at that particular meeting, we did have some people in the public, and they all kind of agreed that they weren't familiar with the law, that this was an education. You know, you just you have to have tons of backup. Bad English. To, to do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, if it's in the METCD and the police, uh, whether it be uh, through uh, also uh, my support or, or like I said, Evan's support or the staff, police staff report, then most likely the uh, police commission will approve it uh, on, on occasion. You know, uh, there might be a little rift or somebody might not totally agree, and then that's where it's up to them. Sometimes it gets approved and, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but for the most cases, especially if the police staff and the chief support it, it will get It'll usually get approved. Um, I think of, I don't know, the last, say, 10 or 15 years. I think they went against my recommendation one way or the other, maybe twice, but I can't say 100%, but usually it, it helps. And, uh, again, having the support even from the committee here sometimes might make a difference because a lot of times, you know, when they propose something, I'll just use a quick example of no parking. You know, somebody doesn't want no parking. Well, I'll use the example of the sea grape as a perfect example. The people around there, well, we want no parking. The police commission actually voted no parking. They put up the signs and they went to court and we lost, the town lost, hmm. because it was a, an effect of a business and all that. Now, the other thing, there was another business, a hair salon, uh, it's no longer there now. They were totally monopolizing uh, the, uh, the street and it really became a safety issue. And on that one, we were able at least to convince, we tried to show a compromise that, you know, maybe the first 100 feet of the intersection was no parking, but we didn't discourage it afterwards. They'd have to walk farther, or maybe that would maybe encourage carpooling or whatever it might be, but because uh, it was mainly workers. Uh, but uh, that's just an example of how you can kind of, you know, work with them. So I, that was a nice thank recap. You. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and just uh, the, What's that? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So the second thing in that is, you know, the cost. I mean, you know, these things yeah. they cost something, right? Mm -hmm. So Bill had shared with me that there's kind of two costs. There's the, the cost, of course, for the sign itself. And you got to remember the second thing is it sits on top of the post often, but not always. Um, but there's, you know, cost involved in both of those. So kind of quick math, you know, signs might be 35 to 100 bucks a, a pop. And then post, I think there's two posts built, you know, 30 bucks each. So that's, you know, 60 right there on top of you know, the cost of the sign. So we're talking, you know, buck and a half for maybe a sign kind of, if you want to kind of put a number to it. And then it comes down to where, where's, where's the money come from? Uh, my recollection, Bill, is it comes from either or both of the uh, DPW. And I think you said the health department, if I recall correctly. 
Uh, well, on that was the health department was kind enough uh, a couple of years now we've been able to use the bike routes, and so we were able to purchase the bike route and share the road signs and pavement markings through, I'll call it Santina's Grant, uh, and, and, and do it that way. Uh, and uh, I believe there is still some money for, for next year, whether we choose to do that or a sidewalk. I know a couple of sidewalk locations had come up yeah. as well. I think she's but, thinking pedestrian-based. Yeah, right, yeah, right. But the signs are still pedestrian. But the other is uh, we do have um, a pocket of money for um, road safety, and so I could certainly make the argument to DPW that, uh, that this would fall under the road safety umbrella uh, and, and, and we could, um, you know, buy the signs that way. Um, uh, Scott, yeah, it's about 150 for the sign and the post, and then if you would, depending on the situation, if there's brand or not or whatever, sometimes you can include the labor, but we just, in general, say it's another $150 for the labor. So in general, we say $300 for the sign, but if we're actually purchasing signs and posts, it's 150 So again, it's one of those things, if we have three or four signs in a month for DPW, they can, I'm sure, sprinkle it in their schedule and they won't really, quote, charge us. If we came in, oh, here's 100 signs for you to put up, right. then I think labor would have to somehow. But now, and Scott, maybe you can answer this too, but are we looking at specific locations right now that we want to do it, or is this just so that we have this information going forward? Yeah, Carol, thank you. Great question. That was kind of the second of the three things I wanted to kind of talk about uh, briefly today. So the second thing is really, to your point, uh, where location. So what I've done, um, and this you know, follows up from last month where I mentioned that if anybody has seen any signs around town, I put together a Google Drive spreadsheet. Um, I think I can send it out to everybody after the, after the meeting tonight. Um, so, and I know Sarah, you added added uh, one in there. So I think I need to give you all approval, but no problem. If you want to get into it, I can give you access. But uh, I've added to that um, since Sarah, you looked at it. So I've added a section about desired locations, Karen. So I think that what I'm, I'm trying to do, because when I talk to Bill, um, there really is not a clear, I guess, delineation as to where these signs exist uh, in town. So I've been kind of, you know, kind of ad hoc when I've been driving through town. I kind of see a sign, I make a quick note of it if I can, and or take a quick picture. So if you all, you know, would want to do that, that's great. Just if you happen to be driving by and say, oh, there's a sign on Unqua, um, you know, either text Scott, email Scott, or you can go to the Google Drive link, which I'll send you. And then to your point, Karen, if you anybody has a desired location. That's also the purpose of that Google Drive. So if you, you feel there should be one or you'd like to see one or like to have us consider one being in a location, uh, that's what that Google Drive spreadsheet can uh, can accomplish. Okay. Yeah, Scott, thank okay. you. If you could resend that because I think since you sent it, we have two new committee members, and I can give you yep. their email addresses after the meeting. Um, so we want to make sure that they can access that um, as well. And then I just okay. have a quick question. To Bill on that. Um, so I'm just having a thought about it as we're discussing it. You know, we can't do anything as far as bike routes right now, like Black Rock and, you know, these guys. But can we put a sign at corners of those locations without any? Well, the corner, I'm thinking the, of feeder, either the feeder, or, the feeder like, or the side street, yeah. I think, yes, we could. Okay. The actual I think there's one on state road. highway, you, you, we, we would need state approval. But if you do it at a cross-section, you're kind of okay. Yeah. Well, if it's, if it's facing or if it's, quote, in the town or yeah. public right-of-way of the town street, like you used the boroughs as an example. Because that, well, that's uh, one of the bike routes. But I'm just thinking, you know, those are some of the busiest intersections. Those are some of the worst areas for crossing and everything else so wouldn't you know since we can't do certain things there can we can can you put a sign yeah. well again it all depends on on what sign and yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example of where you they don't want to see like a pedestrian crossing sign is already at a crosswalk that's at a signal right because it's already right. you know it's right. like that's a double you sense. know they yeah. don't want that and so um <clears throat> uh, uh you know that is just certain rules that you, you yeah. just have to follow yeah. uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff but um, if it's, we'll just use, what's that one? It used to Little Pub. I don't know if it's still there or not as an yeah. example. Well, actually, it's a bad example because North Benson's a state road. But, um, yeah, we turn the corner of Brookside or something like that. You know, once you get past the gas station, if we put a bike route sign, if that was a bike route 
or um, you know a share the road sign or something like that. Okay. Uh, maybe Sam Mortar if there was a share the road you know mm -hmm. sign. There might there might even be more Tamor. I think has one. Uh, they should. Uh, if not, that's something that we can we can look. Yeah. At as well, because well. actually I don't know how we don't have anything on Tamor, and that's a bike route. Yeah, so. that's why it, they should have been. That's, yeah. I'll have to check with DPW yeah. of why they're quote. Yeah. We got the pavement markings, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's sometimes that falls through the, 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 the crack there, or they have, quote, a sign guy, and he's out, or he retired, and somebody <laughs> came in. And, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. All right, folks, we got to gotta, um, exactly. start wrapping this. Does anybody else have any more comments or questions on the committee? Yeah, just there, just, uh, yeah. just one, one more minute, one more minute sure. around me here. Kind of wonder if I have three things to talk about tonight. The third thing yeah. is just the concept of, um, kind of, I'll call it validation of road signage. Yeah. Um, you know, words, we're kind of marching down this path, which is wonderful. It's a committee that, you know, kind of vets, which is to uh, determine, you know, what signs and uh, what locations and then undertake the, the process to put them up. But I think mm -hmm. what's most important is to ensure that what we might be doing, you know, has some merit. Um, so I, I did a little bit of research and I'll be doing some more. Um, you know, unfortunately, the only stuff I was able to find was, you know, some studies that were done. You know, albeit six, seven years ago, to indicate that the share the road signs really um, did not have a lot of impact on motorists, which is, I think, the intent of them. So uh, to basically advise and inform motorists that they should, you know, be cognizant that other people are on the road that don't have four wheels. So I, I think the most important thing, maybe kind of wrapping up, you know, this subject here tonight is to kind of figure out, you know, do signs do what we hope they would do. And if they do, are there certain signs that do? Um, and if they are, we should certainly march and move in that direction. Or, or, or if they don't, then we need to kind of pivot and kind of figure out then what, what else can we do? Because, you know, signs are everywhere. Um, they should have a reason and a benefit for pedestrians and, and bikers. Or you could argue, you know, what's the point? And the same thing is true as Sheros. I, I kind of found the same same data point about Sheros is neither the share the road signs nor the Sheros really had, you know, the desired impact. But again, these are just a couple of studies. I don't want to leave this on a negative note. I just want to leave it on a, you know, informational note that we should look at it from that perspective first and then kind of move down to figure out, you know, what signs they might be. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, I think, um, you know, studies have shown that it, it's, it's the design of the road has more of an impact on, on the driver's behavior than, than the signage. Uh, that being said, you know, is this something we want to continue to pursue? Or, you know, I'll bring up again the, the DOT in Maine doing their motorist share the road signs, which I still need to call um, our DOT to get confirmation. Um, I spoke to the DOT in Maine who said that any sign that's just pure text does meet MUTCD approval, apparently without parenthesis, uh, the, the little um, yeah, the apostrophe. <laughs> the apostrophe. <laughs> but that would not have an apostrophe. So um, that is something I think, you know, if, 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 if we're trying to get a message to the motorists, that, that, that's one avenue to take. Or do we, as you mentioned, focus our energy on, on other ways of trying to change motorist behavior? Um, well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If I can just interrupt, I'm going to leave. Yes. To be honest with you, I haven't seen my family for more than an hour this week. Uh, but if there's any questions, I'll, I, um, you know, follow up with an email. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, if Nate and Richard had attended the meeting, they can fill you in. And certainly, if they have any questions. Yeah, like, Richard's on the call. Yeah. And um, thank you, Phil. Go see your family. Yep. Have a happy Hi. holiday. Yeah. Drive yeah. safe. Yeah. Okay, Bruce, for the record, Bill uh, Harley left the meeting. Bill's left. Yep. Okay. Um, Nate was not able to, he's driving through upstate New York. He sent me a text. He was not able to get on the call. Um, so Nate is not in attendance. Um, he did mention to me on the phone when he called me earlier, Karen, he, you said you might try to drive his bike route. Did you get a chance to do that? I have not had a okay. chance. Um, but yes, that and also then there, you know, as I discussed last time, there's a form that has to be filled yeah. out. And um, I was struggling to find the form, but I mean, I, Bill will know how to where it is. I, I've yeah. had it before. I thought I could yeah. find it in my notes, and I couldn't. So no um, I'll find that, and we'll take Great. care of it. So we'll we'll table that. Um, and then the next item is also a Nate item. Um, I did speak to Nate about the Grasmere Post Road uh, public meeting. He said it went really well, as Bill mentioned, um, about 30 people in attendance. And Nate said, overwhelmingly positive, the neighborhood's positive and supportive of the changes. Um, 
to the Grasmere Post Road intersection that will improve safety for people walking and get us our town's first separated bike lanes, which is very exciting. Um, it's uh, For the most part, there's separate designated bike lanes. There is a point in the road, I guess, where it's a little narrow and they use a sharrow instead of um, a protected, uh, des I'm sorry, designated bike lane. But overall, um, very positive meeting. That project is moving forward in a good direction. Um, and he didn't have any comments about um, any misgivings from a design standpoint or anything like that. So that's where that is. Uh, moving on to the Post Road Circle Public Meeting. Richard, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Awesome. Would you mind speaking for a few minutes about uh, the Post Road Circle Meeting last night? Yes, of course. Uh, as mentioned earlier, it was well attended. Maybe 50 members or 50 people from the community. Uh, the designers they put on a really great presentation. I thought, uh, which I was told will be available to download on their website. I have that website, so I'll go there and download it and email around to the, the committee. Uh, it seems like they've settled on a peanut design to redo that traffic circle. Uh, you know, after the McDonald's uh, with that. Um, medical offices are uh it looked really it looked really attractive on the the sketches they had some 3d modeling uh they did mention that this is tying into the grassmere project uh so we'll all be kind of seamlessly integrated uh they talked about at the beginning of the presentation that there were i believe uh two two accidents involving pedestrians one fatality and i believe six uh, six uh, accidents involving bicyclists. This is over a three-year period. Um, and essentially the data that they provided showed that King's Highway cutoff going into the town, I guess you could say going east to west, people were traveling in excess of 40 miles per hour during the rush hour times, and the same going from uh, west to east down King's Highway going towards, uh, I guess, Black Rock. Uh, past the Circle Diner, that was also kind of a very big, like, speedway area. Uh, so the way they designed it, narrowing the lanes, reducing things to one lane, uh, angling the road, and the way they described it, a peanut design, I'd never seen it before. Uh, but, again, I'll get the, the, the renderings. It looked really nice. Uh, the one thing they did say, though, the price tag would be about $13.9 million dollars to get yeah. done in only three stages. Uh, it would also require, I guess, um, approval from some of the private landowners, you know, the McDonald's, the ShopRite, the Marshalls, because it involves sometimes widening and narrowing uh, driveway aprons or, you know, entrance and exits uh, to different businesses. Um, so there's some work that has to get done, I guess, with the private you know, private entities that are around that route. Um, and also they talked about, redu you know, possibly shaving off some costs because they built in, like, the landscape design and certain, you know, uh, they talked about this type of curb cut, uh, you know, landscape trees and things like that, that, you know, can we could maybe save costs by not doing that. Uh, but the town really liked it. They did present two options, but really the peanut design is the one the one they were really uh, in favor of, and everybody else was as well. It was a complete redesign of that whole area. Um, and I think it was, it was very nice looking. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, uh, I highly encourage you, um, Richard, what I said in on the community advisory meeting a couple weeks ago, the presentation was about 30, 40 minutes. If you have time to check it out, super, I thought it was so fun, <laughs> but I kind of like nerd out on this stuff, but it was really fascinating. Um, to listen to how they collected the data and how they came up with the design. The, the peanut shaped roundabout looks amazing. And to, I know, you, uh, Mike, I know she's like, oh, $14 million. They did speak to that about how um, this infrastructure bill, I don't know if they mentioned this, Richard, but the infrastructure bill coming from the federal government um, could provide uh, part of that money. They, there are some creative ways to, to fund it, and obviously it's something that's not going to happen tomorrow. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, but they, they, 
as much as that seems like a scary number, they weren't very afraid of it. <laughs> in the meeting that I took part in, they're like, they feel like they're, they, Bill even mentioned at the community advisory meeting, it, it's something they um, could possibly do in phases as well, which would help, you know, make the cost less, mm -hmm. less intimidating. Uh, does anyone else have questions for Richard or about? Just, just a comment. Sure. Um, are these all state roads? The Kings Highway is a state road and the Post Road, oh, right? So yeah. I, I was at a, a meeting a few weeks ago, and, and uh, the governor was there. And you know, the state has six billion dollars, and he said, you know, we're going to use 100 million for this, 200 for this. He go. He basically said, we have a lot of money left over, and um, you know, it's called an infrastructure bill, and that's exactly what this is. And, uh, but he says, you know, send me something like, you know, so I think that, you know, this is, I call it opportunity of a lifetime. Mm. You know, I work for a small town and we we're getting $3 million up there. It was getting a lot more, but on top of that, there's state money left over. Mm. And I, you, you certainly, in my opinion, can't put a burden like that on the taxpayers. I just, you know, I think that's not the correct. Don't they have thing. like hundreds of millions of dollars of unfunded pension liabilities that are just looming over everything? But you can't use the federal money for pension liabilities. That's one right. of the restrictions. Okay. Okay. So, which is a good thing. Uh, but isn't it fungible at a certain point where you say, you know, yeah, we're not spending federal money on that, but I don't know. Well, they're very specific about we're not using it to fund unfunded pension liabilities. No. Hmm. So, Beyond my pay grade. But again, to me, it is an infrastructure. The federal money was intended for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he basically said, give me some ideas. Like, and he was almost saying, I have extra money. And if you don't speak up, if you don't ask for the order, you'll never get it. You know? <laughs> so I think it's something worth pursuing. And um, I, uh, certainly, you know, with state money, as I deal with now, you know, and things like this, first in line means a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, First, first time here, so I don't really know a lot of details, but it would not hurt to get somewhat of a firm. 14 million is probably a firm enough number for now. Uh, and, and, you know, reach out to the governor. I can't, Melissa, I think McCaw is uh, the person that you would reach out to. Um, it, it might just take an email, um, you know, saying, is this something, you know, we'd like to have this state and federal government fund because uh, it is a state road, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. We'd like to use some of your ARPA money um, for this project and get it on the list. That's a good insight. I mean, yeah. Get, get it on the right. list. Who would that email come from? Come from the first selectman? It could, it could come, uh, I would think, the first selectman, you know, somebody, and it doesn't have to be long, I don't think. I mean, just so. No, to your point, just get it up there. Just a little paragraph and send it right to him. I think her name is Melissa McCaw. Okay. You mentioned. Uh, it was like sort of like his assistant, uh, main chief of staff. Chief of staff. I think mm -hmm. that's exactly right. Thank you. She's chief of staff. Um, so again, nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. And, uh, Good. All they can do is say no. Right. But you know, let's say they fund half of it. You know, whatever. You trim down the plan. You know, use some of the. Yeah. Cut the cost by some of the things that were mentioned, uh, landscaping, et cetera. Um, so anyhow, just just a point that um, you know, this is like I keep telling everybody, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, thank you, and, Steve. And, and if we don't spend it in our town, it's going to be spent somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I will say, speaking to that, um, I know uh, our two state representatives, um, well, two of our state representatives, Chris McCarthy, Vahey, and Jennifer Leeper, attended the public meeting last night. Super excited about the peanut roundabout and very supportive. So well, I think we can. We they're can, probably the best people to go yes, first. Yes. And ask their advice on what needs to be done to get it into the queue mm -hmm. for the governor's overall plan to spend yeah. this money. Yeah. And they're very supportive of this committee, so we can we well, can that's, certainly. That's a perfect yeah. end, I think. Yeah. Great. Perfect end, so. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have any questions or comments about post road circle? Richard, thank you so much for that. Anything else you want to add, Richard, before we move on to your next uh, item? No, that, that's fine. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, Richard, this is a holdover from uh, November when you were not able to attend. Um, if you just want to briefly talk about, I did pass around your um, your charter and ordinance research. If you want to, I, I imagine not much has changed since then, but if you, uh, I know Steve was not on the committee then, so if you want to, and I'll send it to you afterwards, Steve, okay, sure. um, Richard's report. Uh, give us a brief update about uh, your research into that. 
Yeah, so essentially, um, you know, I see that uh, to get kind of more teeth, it looks like we had to become or, you know, some type of a commission. Uh, and it seems like that gets done through a charter revision. And the town of Fairfield does have a committee or a commission, like a charter revision commission. And I believe we've seen emails that circulating that they're, they're working on amending the charter or something to that effect. Uh, so it's essentially how can we get the not so much the committee into the charter, but to make the bike and pedestrian into a commission uh, that would involve the, the charter amendment, which potentially we could try to reach out to somebody in this charter uh, charter update commission to see if they'd be interested. We could talk to them and whether or not they have any previous ties to this committee. Um, I also looked at some of them are, are most of all of them are up. Uh, their term is limited next year, I believe it was. So potentially somebody from our committee can volunteer to join that commission or become hmm. elected into that commission, and we could potentially push our agenda of turning the bike and pedestrian into a commission. Uh, also, we would need some support from the RTM to delegate some sort of power to us because they're the legislative arm of the, of the town, it looks like. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think our next step would be kind of to reach out to the to that commission, the Charter Revision Commission, uh, and see what they say in the polls if we can, you know, if they, we would have some type of support as somebody from the RTM as well. Great. Thank you, Richard. So um, just to bring everybody up as a reminder that uh, this came about, um, the last time our town charter was revised was in 2006. And this committee did not form until 2014. So we are at, this, at present not in the charter just because of that. And so we serve at the pleasure of the, the first elect person. And so, um, you know, I, we're all in good standing. There's no immediate worry. But obviously, we want this committee to have permanence. And we also, we have purely an advisory role at this point um, because we are a committee and not a commission. And so if we wanted to explore having um, what we, we recommend have more teeth, we could, we could explore trying to become a commission. Um, but uh, I don't know if, there, if it's an either or Richard. Um, Richard's an attorney, by the way, Steve, and so that's why I asked him to look into this. Um, but for sure, we want to make sure that we have permanence in the charter so that we're not serving at the pleasure of whoever happens to be the first select person. Um, and then, you know, if we, you know, that's like goal number one. And also what would be important, you know, whether it happens through this charter revision or some other way is to have us have uh, more authority, like the police commission, you know, what they say. Well, I, this, this would be my question then, too. And I'm thinking about commissions in town. Most of yeah. the commissions serve for something. So the conservation has a conservation commission, but they serve with the conservation department. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, golf is sort of the same mm -hmm. way. So there's different places in which I think of the commissions, but they serve mm -hmm. within an actual role. Mm -hmm. So what would our role then be within? I mean, it's not really engineering. It's not really, you know, yeah. where, where does that fall? I guess that would be my question to that, which is where I think the like, police commission is the same thing. Yeah. They serve mm -hmm. for the police department. So that's, that's a good question. And I, you know, <clears throat> part of this stem from, um, my learning that the Norwalk police, uh, the Norwalk Bike and Pedestrian Committee became a commission in the last couple of years. But they, um, their government structure is a little different. They have a Department of Public Works, and they also have a Department of Transportation, Mobility, and Parking. And so, whether or not the um, Bike Commission, Bike and Pedestrian Commission, serves that Transportation, Mobility, and Parking uh, department, I don't know. But uh, Richard, if you want to. Um, I don't know if you need to research further, if you can answer now, if, if that's an either or, like just trying to get us some permanence in the charter, just as we are as a committee, or, you know, do we also, you know, pursue the commission route as well? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I believe it was another committee member that did at some point send an email around saying, that, you know, to put us into the charter as the committee. Uh, I, I don't believe it has to be the either or. You know, it's okay. just about, you know, we could be, as a committee into the charter, and then I guess we have this permanence there, but our role would essentially be the same in terms of advisory. Um, 
you know, if we want to, uh, you know, again, be a commission, uh, you know, that we can look into. I believe I looked at, I looked at the Norwalk, uh, what they were doing. You know, Sarah, you suggested that, uh, you know, just to kind of see the powers that they have. Uh, you know, it wasn't very, wasn't so groundbreaking or anything like that. Somewhat similar to ours, but obviously they have, as a, I believe that the commission that they have more uh, say in things. Uh, but I think that's something we could explore is what us as a commission, what kind of role we would want to play and what kind of decisions we would want to have to weigh in on, you know, as the commission. Yeah, I, I wonder if we could have, if, if there could be a higher level commission and the first I had a discussion with Sarah about this on the phone, but to me it's all about safety. I mean, with this committee, I wonder if, there's, if there could be like a safety commission and this, you know, a member or two from the committee would be in there, and then other uh, school safety, uh, you know, other safety pieces uh, that are that impact the residents, you know, based on whatever it might be, whether it be children or elderly safety people, you know, whatever. But maybe have a safety commission, of which one of us or two of us will be a part. But I mean, yeah. you know. Um, does that start to sound like something part of the police? Well, the police does have a safety well, and traffic. Uh, yeah, they're called public yeah. safety, and I, you know, yeah, it, I'm sure there might be overlap, or maybe, well, you know, maybe um, if this commission doesn't come to fruition, uh, maybe there's a way to get on the public safety committee um, with a membership uh, representative from here. Mm -hmm. Just Thank you, Steve. No, that's 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 something to consider. Um, I don't know if about it. To be yeah. <laughs> That's I don't okay. really know the difference between committee and commission. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, yeah, it seems a lot of shades of gray. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Richard, what I'm thinking maybe the next step would be, I did, was it back in October, I was invited to participate in a um, virtual meeting with the uh, Charter Revision Committee, all the um, committee chairs were invited. And I did bring up that we, you know, we're not in the charter and they did seem you know, concerned about that and interested in, in exploring putting us in the charter. And I followed up with an email and I never heard back. So maybe uh, what I'm proposing to do is I send um, another email uh, and CC you on it and say that, you know, we have this wonderful committee member who's looking into this and we want to know, like, how we work with you to, to get this into the charter revision and, and see if we can have a conversation with him. What do you say? Yeah, definitely. That sounds great. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, anybody else have any more comments about uh, the charter or ordinance research that Richard did? No? Awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to my chair updates. Um, got a bunch to report. Uh, try to go through this as quickly as possible because I want to get everybody out of here well before 730. Um, we did our World Day of Remembrance event. It was a huge success. Thank you to all the committee members who helped along the way. Um, it meant so much to all the family members who have lost people due to traffic violence. Um, Judy Proctor, who we know, Kathy Hamill, who lost her sister, and Denise Fernandez, who lost her future sister-in-law, um, were there. And it was just a beautiful event. Senator Blumenthal came and spoke. Uh, Kristen mccarthy he spoke. Brenda Kupchik spoke. And um, had a great turnout in terms of uh, just regular folks coming as well. So, and we made, um, we made the paper, we made the front of the Connecticut Post. So thank you to Mike Allen for his press, <laughs> um, his help with the press, and thank you all so much. Um, also wanted to mention that a couple weeks ago, Scott- Can I just uh, make a quick comment about that, Sarah? Sure, yeah. Yeah, this is Scott. I just wanted, for those who were not there, there was a handful of us who were there. Um, I think that it, we, should, we should applaud our, our chairperson, Sarah, here. She did a phenomenal job. I mean, she really ran that event uh, like a professional. She probably, you know, spent as much time at the podium as everybody else did combined. Uh, there was a lot of appreciation. And uh, I've talked with a number of people who came out of that event and, and were wowed by, by the effort uh, and the results and the initiative. So I just think on behalf of the committee, I think we should be uh, appreciative that we've got a great chairperson who takes our – our mission forward, and it was very successful in getting uh, local government and and the senator to 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 attend as well. So so thank you, Sarah. 
thank you, Scott. Here, here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, you know, like, I, I hope that we don't have to do it again next year, but probably we will <laughs> have to do another event um, until we can get our roads to be safer for all users. But um, it's an honor to, to plan it. So uh, just quickly, a couple weeks ago, Scott Craighead and I went to Norwalk. We met with um, Scott's brother, Brad, and a woman named Audrey, and Brad's wife, Tracy, who are trying to do some pedestrian and cycling uh, safety initiatives in the neighborhood of East Norwalk, and it was great to connect with them. Um, so many communities are trying to do what we're doing, whether it's ad hoc groups or nonprofits or town committees, and so it's, it's nice to be able to have a dialogue and share, you know, best practices or strategies for, for trying to work both locally and, and together. Uh, Scott, did you want to quickly say anything about that meeting? Um. I think that the takeaway from my perspective, you know, Sarah, was was there are other, you know, bike uh, ped or bike and ped groups in other towns. Mm -hmm. So I think the consensus was, I think the word we kind of you know, circulated around was maybe a coalition. Uh, maybe we might just, instead of operating within a silo perhaps, which is fine because we all represent our town, but we can maybe benchmark from what neighboring towns or, or towns that are quite nearby as to what they're doing. So um, I think, you know, we might want to think about not just investigating what towns have these committees, but also maybe start getting to know somebody at the committee and, and learning what their best practices are. So I think that might be an agenda discussion going forward. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, quickly, let's see, where are, where am I going? Uh, da, 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 da. I wanted to mention that I know that uh, I, we talked in the past about the local speed limit control ordinance. Steve, I don't know if you're familiar, um, the local speed control ordinance, um, the state passed uh, PA 21-28, effective October 1st. Uh, it had a variety of um, clauses for um, protecting pedestrians and cyclists, but one of the um, clauses is that um, enabling legislations towns can adopt to control the speed limits on local roads, not state roads, but to right now, but prior to this enabling legislation, it, all speed limit decisions had to be made finalized at the state level. Uh, I do know that um, our RTM is working on an ordinance for our town. We would be one of the first towns to adopt it. I've heard that Old Line is also working on an ordinance. Um, a lot of uh, other states around us have this enabling legislation, New York, Massachusetts. I can think of off the top of my head, and there's a few others. Um, so we'll see where that, where that goes. I know they're in the, the beginning stages of that. Um, I met with Sean O'Sullivan from the Sustainable Tax Force. Uh, that was a great meeting. Just, you know, she sends me all sorts of bike and pedestrian stuff. So I said, why don't we meet? And she's very supportive of what we're doing. And um, we need, I need to follow up. She went on vacation, but we need to talk more in detail, I think, uh, in this committee about the, the DEEP grants and how we might be able to take advantage of those um, in partnership with the Sustainable Task Force. I had a meeting with uh, Dylan O'Connor and Aaron Lopez from the Stratfield Village Association about the Four Corners project. That project is pretty much complete in terms of the design, but what Dylan asked um, me to do, and uh, Bill Pollack, actually a former committee member, also to take a look at, are there any um, road markings where we could make some improvements? And so what we suggested is, you know, wherever we can't, wherever they can, making sure the lanes are 11 feet or less wide, because the more narrow they are, the more it encourages cars to slow down. And we also proposed uh, doing something with the crosswalks to make them more prominent visually. Um, some, uh, I think it's, um, is it Glastonbury? I can't remember the name of the town off the top of my head. Has um, it's embossed pavement that's painted red, and then um, the white iridescent on the. Well, the iridescent thing I think is a big mm -hmm. yeah. So we've asked just the like those new signs. They ask, we've asked the designers to look into some of that. Just you know, little things that can add up to a little more safety mm -hmm. for that project. Uh, let's see what else. I sent out, and I'll send it around again because I think I sent it out before um, Steve and Tom were on the committee. The so where, where is it scary uh, document? So at the World Day of Remembrance, we put out a flip chart that says, where is it scary to walk, bike, or cross the street in our town? And we got some really good feedback from um, places we knew, like Black Rock Turnpike, um, 
South Benson Road, that, those kinds of places, but some were unexpected. And I'd like to get your thoughts on perhaps putting that as like a Google form on our website where people can submit so that we can provide that information to folks like Bill at DPW and see, you know, where I think where's the projects idea. that, you know, where's there some places where we can make improvements. So I'll send that around again. Does this committee have a website? Through the yes. town. So a web page on the town. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But Sarah takes care of all the social media, and she's been doing a great job with it. Oh, so, thank you. Um, she did do a story on that and Instagram with, like, people. And uh, did you get in many responses from that? Uh, like, three or four. But That's pretty good. good. Yeah. That's pretty good. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three or four, and they're in that document. So I'll resend that. Um, finally, uh, two things. In January, I want to dedicate uh, a good like 45 minutes or so to doing a planning session about uh, our goals for 2022. Um, you know, we'll keep them broad, but you know, what are some things we'd like to try to accomplish as a committee? Um, so keep that in mind for January that we're going to do a planning session around that. I'm hoping to borrow the flip charts and you know, we'll, we'll have some fun brainstorming ideas. And also, um, oh yeah, I did take part in the, the Freedom of Information and Robert Rules video, or I watched it, I should say. Um, I watched it while I was doing other things. You really only need to listen. I highly recommend it <laughs> if, you, if you need a refresher. Uh, I found it very helpful. It is great. It is. Good. It, was, it was really good. Um, finally, I'm lining up some guest speakers for our committee meetings. And uh, this is something we'll talk about in our planning session, but I want to give you a heads up. I talked about it last month. Jonathan Goodison from the Wellness Committee at the Fairfield Public Schools District is going to come in January and talk about how we could possibly um, support Fairfield Public Schools and better education about road safety, walking, cycling. Um, you know, there's the National Walk to School and Bike to School programs. Can we do something townwide? Can we support them in that? Um, so he's coming in January. So what was his position again? He is, I don't, he's the chair of the wellness committee. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall, but I can get you, Mike, his like actual okay. work title as well. Um, and so that was a result I reached out to Mike Cummings about National Walk to School. And he said, um, well, we, we're in the process of getting a new wellness committee chair and he should meet with you all when, when he comes on board. In February, Mark Barnhart, our Community and Economic Development Director, is going to come, um, be a guest speaker, bring us up to speed on what's going on with um, community and economic development and where we might overlap and be able to uh, um, support one another. And then in March, Emmeline Harrigan uh, from the Planning Department is going to come and speak about uh, planning and zoning is one where I feel like, uh, and we'll talk about it in January, love to have a liaison who at the very least reads the minutes every month to let us know, you know, because a lot of times with new developments, there's requirements to, like, put in sidewalks or um, bicycle amenities. Uh, so it would be good for us to keep up to speed with what's going on um, with planning and zoning. So Emmeline's going to speak, but I'd love you for you all to think um, prior to the January meeting of some other folks, whether within the town or outside, that you might like to have come and talk to us briefly. Like, this will just be, you know, they'll talk for 10 minutes or so, and then we'll take do Q&A. I thought of like the police commission. I, I would love to have the chair of the police commission come because a lot of what they do impacts road safety. Um, maybe watch for me CT. It's a statewide organization all about pedestrian cycling safety and driver safety. Um, and the, the folks in New Haven are doing some really cool stuff. I don't know if you've seen in the Woodville neighborhood, they're doing a cycle track. Separate. It's like in, in Copenhagen where you have the sidewalk the bike lane, and then you go down into the street. Right. And so they're really got some innovative, interesting things mm -hmm. going on. So that could be that could be um, a fun guest speaker to have as someone from New Haven um, to come and talk about what they're accomplishing there. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions, comments about my uh, report? Wow, no? Okay. Great. So um, we're going to move on. To uh, hear, consider, and act upon any other business and communications. Does anybody have anything else they want to bring up? I'll write you separately on the bike rodeo. It's, it's super embryonic at this point. Yes, yes. Let's keep that we'll conversation going. Yeah. 
And um, I do want to acknowledge that we do have a member of the public here, um, Mary, right? Mary, thank you so much for coming. Mary, if I could just, yeah, have you say your name for the for the record. Yeah, so my name is Mary Tomi Strito. I live on Beaumont Street. I um, lived in Fairfield about four years. I grew up in Connecticut, but I lived in Massachusetts for 17. And while I was there, I was part of Harvard University. I worked at Harvard for 14 years and was part of the Harvard Commuter Choice oh. uh, program. Um, so we looked at, you know, road safety, bike safety. There's an abundance of accidents, bike accidents around the Cambridge area, which is where I live as well. Um, and I'm really avid walker and really interested in um, improving uh, walking routes here. I'm also the director of environmental compliance and safety at Fordham University. Oh, wow. So um, to your point, Steve, there's a definitely a difference between uh, public safety, please, and environmental safety. Um, so um, I've been wanting to get here for a while. I'm happy to be able to get here and, and you know, I can participate or help at all. Let me know because I'm, um, you know, really interested in improving um, walking routes and biking routes here. At, uh, here. I know a committee you can join. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any room, I'd be happy to. Uh, like I said, I work with the Commuter Choice at Harvard. I have a really good friend. I know that you're looking for people as guest speakers. She's uh, She's part of the, she's a consultant now, but she worked at Harvard um, at Yale for a while to get the uh, commuter choice going there and different things that Yale has. Is that Holly Parker? Yeah. She's Holly. my friend, too. She's a friend of mine. She's a friend of mine. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, she bought the zip cars to New Haven. Actually. Yeah. She was part of that. Um, oh, cool. So I'm really interested in that because I think, you know, um, I know you talked about earlier and I'll stop talking about, uh, about sidewalks and while sidewalks are important, I think you need, you know, the crosswalks to go into mm -hmm. it. I noticed that it's close where we have them. We don't have them on the side streets. Yeah. I live over near Geronimo's and South Pine Creek and that that uh, intersection is kind of a mess and uh, I just would like to see, you know, if we can. Thank you, Barry. And you know why? Why don't you and I have a, an offline conversation? We can exchange contact information yeah, and and talk. For, we do always. We like to keep a list of people who are interested in the committee because we have you know openings from time to time. Bruce will be coming off um, after January, and so can always you know consider you in the future. So I'm going. Thank you so much for oh, coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't. That was great. I'm going to make um, a motion. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. All right. M Mike made a motion. Karen seconded. And I want to wish you all a happy holiday season and joyous New Year. And I look forward to seeing you all uh, in January. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good night. Um,